please, a big applause to my friend, Bart. For us, at Blue 21 and Delta Sync, our floating adventure started about 10 years ago, when we started a company just fresh out of university, uh, much centered around the concept of floating cities, floating developments, and as a way to adapt to sea level rise. So, a bit about uh, my background. Um, I'm from Holland, the Netherlands, um, and looking back at our history, or rather looking forward, as uh, the Polynesians would say, uh, we, we basically started out in a swamp. So some crazy people at a certain point thought, let's start living in this swamp, and there's a lot of resources, but it's not really safe, so we had to deal with uh, a lot of water, both its merits and its threats. In um, 1953, we had a huge uh, break of the dikes, um, and that was the reason to start building dikes and protect ourselves. Um, we are not alone in this respect. Um, living at the coast, like 40% of the world's population is actually living in coastal areas. Um, and 5% lives in the very low-lying areas that are directly threatened by climate change. If we look at Polynesia, there's even more people living um, close to the water. But in the Netherlands, uh, we are basically, um, I don't know if I can say this, is it broadcasted? <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say this, but we're fucked. Uh, <laughs> what is interesting is that not only people like to live near the coast, near the water, to get food, to um, be able to use ports, to, to discover, but actually our ecosystems uh, they are most productive at the coastal areas, the red areas on the map. So that is an interesting um, idea, and it, it was really inspiring to me. If, if you look in detail at, at Tahiti, that the, the reefs that are most productive and that provide food are directly next to where the people are living, all around the edges. So it seems as if the fringes of, of land and water, like the interface, is what is creating life. That's where life uh, starts. And in this example, which is an old oil rig, so an introduced structure, this is actually where, after a couple of decades, you have fish and, and ecosystems trying, uh, starting to evolve in the middle of the ocean. So that's my inspiration for what architecture in this place could, could look like and what, what its function could be. It could basically be an interface introducing new fringes, new um, interfaces with land and water. It could also provide new coasts because they are pretty scarce. And, and uh, everyone wants to have a coast, and for some of the people it's now quite difficult to, to uh, be at the beach because it's, it's far away and they're not all public. So we could make new coasts and, and interfaces, and we could actually, to become part of the ecosystem, we should close this, the cycle. So our floating, our floating developments, they should not produce waste, but reuse the waste, also the waste of, of the land. If there are nutrients that, that we, we need to reuse them, we, if you um, waste them into the ocean, it will change the ecosystem.
So, this story might seem like science fiction, but we've already started. Uh, we are building floating structures in the Netherlands as a first step towards future floating developments, uh, maybe one day out in the ocean. We are starting, we have started a, a pilot project in Rotterdam in the Netherlands. Uh, we built it and then uh, towed it across the river to its final destination. Um, and this one project has generated so much interest, like it's a, it's a magnet for um, the, the students that gather around it, the uh, powerful brands that, that are presenting new, efficient, sustainable ways of, of transporting. This is BMW. Fashionistas that, that, that uh, like this as a, as a backdrop for clothing and a lot of um, journalists that have attracted it. So this is another project uh, which features floating houses. Um, let's check it out. Um, and what, what we find important is not to only make a story around uh, ecology, but actually start start testing, start monitoring. So we now have a drone that is going under the floating structures to check out what is below and also to measure the water quality, to measure the parameters of the water. And actually we found that it's already happening. Like under the floating pavilion, you have floating shellfish that, that create uh, spots for tiny fish to juveniles to uh, start reproducing. Um, and yeah, I think for, for us, that's the way to go. So at a, like five years ago, we got into contact with the Seasteading Institute and we were really happy to find uh, another group of people, a community that has had ideas that are probably crazier than ours. <laughs> like being on the middle of the ocean and trying to survive, that's like a, a big challenge. Uh, you have waves of, of 13 meters high. Um, you, you have to get food from somewhere or, or start producing it. So this is a big challenge. And when we got into talks, we thought about what could be the first step to make this a reality? How could this ever uh, come into existence? And together, we thought of a, a strategy. Basically, it's like the tiny little fish that are in a protected place that can grow and at a certain stage they go closer to the, to the ocean, so to the estuaries and then out to the open ocean. And I think for seasteading the only way to make this step to one day have uh, cities floating out in the open ocean is to start uh, pragmatic with a, with a small project and then see if there's interest and if, if people like it. And if you have enough people, it is much easier to protect yourself. It's much easier to have people create food, create energy. So we started only recently uh, thinking about the architecture and what I would find interesting is to um, see if we can come up with architecture that actually does justice to the mana, to the local system, something that is humble, that is not screaming in your face like a modern structure, but something that is like a bit like an island, like a, a mokulana, like a floating island. And it, it could have green surfaces. Um, it could be used as, as an office or a research center. Uh, perhaps it could be used as a gathering place. I've, I've seen in Rayatea, they were practicing for a, a miss, 
this election. Uh, it's very popular here, and it would be really cool to um, do this on the water. Um, or a floating restaurant, and to also show people that the, the place that we're in is actually growing, the ecosystems are doing well, and I think this, this is the way to go. So those are the first sketches. We've been very busy uh, the past months doing a environmental study, so that is the, the majority of what we have been doing, but I really liked to already show some ideas of what this future Seastead could look like. So I will now announce my uh, partner, Karina Sapievska, and she's going to tell you about the environmental uh, assessment study that we did.